Hello, my name is Vivian from Peach Unicorn Designs. Welcome to my Learn to Crochet video series. In this video, I'd like to talk you through a Peach Unicorn Puff Stitch Blanket Pattern. Some examples of my Puff Stitch Blankets would be the Precious Baby Blanket, the Cancer Support Lap Blanket, and the Christmas Lap Blanket to name a few. Some of my designs are available in two different versions. One version would be a motif version of the pattern and the other would be the one piece. The motif version of the pattern allows you to create a multicoloured blanket. It's ideal to be travelling around with because you only take small chunks of your work with you at a time. Uh, but you do have to consideration that at the end of the project you do need to do some sewing together to get the blanket into one piece. The alternative version is the one piece version and this is just one solid blanket made up with one solid colour. Now this is an example of how a motif pattern is written out. At the very top underneath the title it will give you an idea of the grams and yardage that's needed for each of the motifs to be made up. The idea behind this was to help you to be able to change your colours um, within your blanket. So as you're working down the blanket you just need to bring your attention to this section here which says in capital letters and bold all odd rows throughout this motif pattern is single crochet um, and then it tells you that that's the front. Now the front of the pattern you will always have the puff stitches facing you and there will always be single crochet rows. Now this motif says odd rows but bear in mind that other motifs may say even rows so you do need to just double check that make sure that you're working um, odd rows or even rows correctly to the motif. So because this one's all odd rows is single crochet throughout then all the even rows will be listed down the side to tell you what to do with the puff stitch rows. So we're going to work all the way down and at the very end we're going to have a look at the last one which will be in bold and that will be the, the row number that you do last um, before you fasten off. So on this occasion it is odd row so it's just to double check to make sure that you don't do an extra row that's not required on this motif. So let's have a look at the chart for this example. This is the family motif and as you can see the chart is upside down and back to front. There is a reason that the writing is backwards because we're actually going to be working our puff stitch on the back side of our blanket and what that achieves is a beautiful natural puff stitch pops out on the front automatically uh, but to achieve that we need to do the writing in reverse on our charts. The reason why the chart is upside down is because some people like to work their charts from the very top corner here and they like to work from the, the left over to the right on each of their rows so each of their puff rows would go left to right from the top of the chart down to the bottom. But alternatively there's other people that like to work from the bottom corner of the chart and they like to work from the right and they like to work to the left on their puff rows just like so moving up their chart. So this chart is actually designed to allow you to do both of them. If you keep it the right way up you can work from the very top and work down from left to right if you'd like to work up the chart then if you just rotate the chart 180 degrees you can then start in this bottom corner and go from right to left on each of the puff rows and work your way up. If you do that then the writing itself for the motif will match both of them versions. Just one more comment about how the charts are laid out on the pattern. The Stitches are always at the very top of the, the charts and the rows are always worked down the side of the charts. Now this would be a very thin motif but a very long one 
And an example of one at the bottom here would be a very long motif. This would be your stitches at the top and this would be your rows down the side. Now if you worked your motifs up at the 180 degrees and you're working up, then you would have your rows at the side going up and your stitches going across the bottom here. And the same with this one here, your stitches will be at the bottom and your rows will be worked up the side. My patterns are written up for right hand crochet but it is possible to work them up left handed. It is easier for you to work from the charts and if you just start in the very top hand, right hand corner if you want to work down this chart. If you work in the very top right hand corner and go from right to left on each of your puff rows and just work your way down the chart. So if you decide that you wanted to work up the design then you would just turn it round 180 degrees and you would start in the bottom left hand side and work from left to right on each of your puff rows left to right all the way up. If you're not ready to jump straight into a lap blanket pattern then I do have a practice motif pattern which is just one single motif and it's to practice your puff stitches and you can make either one little single motif for practice or alternatively you could make it into several different motifs and sew them all together and make it into a blanket. The pattern does have a sequence at the back and it tells you where to put all your different colours and obviously you choose your colours that you prefer. And what we're going to do today is just talk you through um, this one pattern. So this motif takes up 30 grams of yarn and I thought what we could do is just work up one row together so I could show you how the pattern is written and also talk you through how to do a six loop up puff stitch which is the most common puff stitch that I use in my blankets um, but a puff stitch can be any number of loop ups so you really do need to just check the crochet pattern and, and not automatically assume that it's going to be six loop ups. So we're going to have a look at this pattern and just go to row 10 and that's where we're going to start right now. So just single crochet in the next stitch and then puff in the next stitch and then single crochet in the next seven stitches. So that gives us single crochet, puff stitch, single crochet in the next seven. So I'm working up with this wonderful mango yarn and a blue crochet hook and this white background so hopefully you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So we're going to go in for our first single crochet and then we're going to go into our first puff stitch. Now as I say this is going to be a six loop up puff stitch that I'm going to work with you. So we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into our next stitch. Yarn over and pull up our first loop. So now we have three on our hook. Yarn over into the same stitch. Pull up another loop. So that's our second pull up loop. So now we have five on our hook. Yarn over, pull up another loop. And that's our third pull up and we now have seven on our hook. Yarn over, go through the same stitch again, pull up another loop so that's our fourth and now we have nine on our hook. Yarn over, pull up another, that'll be five so we have eleven on our hook. Yarn over and pull through for the sixth time and now we'll have 13 on our hook. So we're just going to quickly count them. So we've got one that we originally had and then we have 12 that we've just created here. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So now we yarn over and we just pull through the 12 that we've just created and then we yarn over and pull through the remaining two. So that is a puff stitch with six loop ups. So now we're going to single crochet our seven, next seven stitches, so that's one, two, 
three, four, five, six, and seven. Now I'm expecting you to know how to do a single crochet and how to do the chain at this point. Um, if you are brand new to crochet and you need to go through the chain and the single crochet then please refer back to my earlier videos in my Learn to Crochet series, videos 1 to 4 and that will talk you through to the stage where you need to be to be able to start on this blanket. So now we're going to refer back to our pattern. So we've just done our single crochet, our puff and our single crochet in the next 7. So we're onto this nice little bracket section here and it says puff in the next stitch and single crochet in the next three stitches and you've got to do that four times. So we're going to start off with our puff again so we're going to yarn over and we're going to go into our next stitch. Now the, the, the puff stitch will be in slow motion at the end of this video so you can see a little bit slower exactly how to work up the stitch. Now if your puff stitches are getting a little bit too tight then this is the stitch to pull up a little bit higher than the others and that will just loosen up the entire of the puff stitch. So we've pulled up one, we yarn over, pull up two, yarn over three, yarn over, pull up four, yarn over five, yarn over six. So that gives us our 12 here and now one from original and we're going to pull that through the 12 and then through the last two and then we're going to single crochet three, one, two, three and then we're going to do a new puff stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you find that your puff stitches aren't producing a wonderful tight puffed out natural puff on the front side of your blanket then the thing to do is this next little single crochet straight after your puff just make it ever so slightly tighter than the others so when you make it just pull it a little bit tighter um, and that'll just make sure it definitely pops out at the other side and holds tight so that's two single crochet and that's three single crochet now we're going to do another puff one two three five and six pull that through and then we're going to do another three single crochet one two three and we need to do it all one more time so I'll puff one two three four five six And then the last three single crochet one, two, and three. Now we're going to go back to our pattern. So we've just done this section here, and now we're going to do a puff in the next stitch, and then we need to work single crochet in the next seven stitches, then puff in the next and single crochet two. So that's puff, single crochet seven, puff, single crochet two. So let's do our puff. One, two, three four, five, six and we're going to just pull that through and make our puff, sorry my yarn's getting a bit caught and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six and seven single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six for our puff stitch and the last two single crochet. Right. So now we can see our beautiful puffs here. So we're just going to have a look at our pattern again and this pattern is now saying 36 stitches at the end of the row and we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. So let's have a look at our lovely puffs. So there's our puffs there. So we're going to now just count to make sure that we have 20, sorry, 36 stitches. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 
14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. And then we get to the end and we just chain one and turn. And now the row that's facing us now is the one with the puff stitches facing us. And now we do a single crochet row all the way back and then go on to the next puff stitch row. So just want to make a quick note about fastening off. This is an example with a off-white motif previously made. So we have our, our end here and we just need to secure it into the motif before we can um, secure all the motifs together. So what we need to do with it is we need to find a way of securing this end. And normally we would probably work it into the edging but we're not going to do that because this wonderful edging we're going to need in a minute to be able to attach it to another motif and we're going to need the exact stitches. So what we're going to do is probably the best thing is just to hold the end here right on the corner with your thumb so you don't manipulate this, the shape of the corner and we're just going to sew it into the back here of this wonderful puff and you just literally just go in keep this is really important just to keep that right angle right on that corner or else you're going to manipulate the shape of your motif so keep it so it's quite tight but that you've kept it as a right angle and then just go over it again and again and then just snip it with some scissors and that secured your end without without manipulating anything to do with these wonderful stitches down the side which you're going to use in a minute to sew together your motifs. So when we do come to sewing up, um, this is a bone coloured one that was already made so I'm just going to show you how to, how to do the whip stitch join going down them. So when you attach these two motifs together, these these if the pattern shows it, which there will be a chart at the end of the pattern and this pattern shows it too, you see that the puff stitches align themselves all the way throughout this pattern. So you'll always have the puff stitch aligning. It shows you at the end, the end chart of the pattern, it'll show you exactly where the puff stitches need to be, where they need to be aligning to. So you'll see which stitch you'll be able to, to you need to stitch together. So for this example, we would have your single crochet on this one and your chain stitches on this one. And, and all you really do is just go through the chain on one side to the single crochet. And then through to the next one, just in there, and then through that. And then it pulls them together and just gentle tug on it into the next one. And then over into the single crochet that matches the other side, etc. And then you just gently tug and it just pulls them all together. And you just do that all the way along. The one thing that I do want to go through is the edging. When you do um, the raw ends, they're a little bit harder, but if you actually just tug on them a little bit, then you'll see the bits that tend to be hidden. <laughs> so you have sort of several raw ends there, but when you first get your motif done, they're kind of, as you can see, you can't really see where to go into. But if you just give them a gentle tug when you're working your stitches down them, you'll see all the the row ends and where you need to put them. So just put both of the motifs together and just give them a slight stretch. And then you'll be able to see. And then you just go into one, across into the other with your yarn. And I believe that's everything. I hope you enjoy making up the blankets and I hope you enjoy my designs and thank you very much for watching.